The curry files of men addresses the audience and tells them that they must act to preserve their freedom from the women. The chorus of old men also advances toward the audience and, with the curry files of men, the chorus strips its clothing off until the men wear only short tunics. The curry files of men and the chorus of old men lament that the women have caused great disorder in Athens. The curry files of men sneaks up next to the curry files of women, knocks her in the jaw and runs back to the men. The women also remove their mantles, revealing tunics much like those of the men. The chorus of old women also advances toward the audience and makes its plea. The curry files of women tells the audience that she is not ashamed to be a woman, that women's leadership is better than the present state of Greece. The curry files of women hits the curry files of men in the jaw with her slipper. The curry files of men leads the chorus of old men in the removal of their tunics to make the women smell their foul odor. The women also remove their tunics to give the men a whiff of the feminine rage or the enraged female's odor. The curry files of women then grabs the curry files of men by the ankle and trips him. Lisa Strata comes out of the Acropolis, visibly distraught. Lisa Strata complains that the women are escaping from the temple to have sex with their husbands. At that moment, the one of these women attempts to escape from the Acropolis across the stage. The woman explains that she must get back to her weaving at home and runs on despite Lisa Strata's orders. Another woman then runs across the stage telling Lisa Strata that she must pluck the fibers from unpeeled flax and, finally a third woman crosses the stage who pretends that she is pregnant. Other women filter out of the Acropolis and crowd around Lisa Strata who tells the women they must be a united front or that everything will fail. Lisa Strata reads from the Oracle, which tells the women that if they do not work together they will suffer great shame and embarrassment. Encouraged, the women go back to the Citadel. As the women exit, the choruses reassemble. A fight ensues between an old man and an old woman, who unsuccessfully swing at each other with fists and sexual slander. In the midst of this struggle, Lisa Strata mounts a platform and looks over the horizon where she sees an approaching male. Mariah identifies the man as Kinesias, her husband and assures Lisa Strata that she can take care of him. All of the women exit, except for Lisa Strata, who is on the platform, and Mariah, who is hidden from the view of her husband. Kinesias has a visible erection and is followed by a slave who carries a baby boy. Kinesius is in visible pain and demands that Lisa Strata bring out Mariah to him. Mariah appears at the wall and Kinesius begs her to come down to him. Kinesius has brought the couple's son who begs for his mother. Pitying the child, Mariah comes down from the wall. As Mariah descends, Kinesius soliloquizes about the beauty and temper of his wife. When Mariah enters she takes the baby and refuses to let Kinesius touch her. Kinesius explains the problems at home the weaving has come unraveled, the house has gone to hell and he, himself, is desperate for sex. Mariah solidly refuses to have sex with him until there is a peace treaty. Kinesius apparently wants to have sex with Mariah immediately and Mariah takes advantage of his neediness. Mariah pretends she is suddenly willing and gets a cot from inside the Acropolis. While the desperate Kinesius lies down, Mariah goes to get more and more essential items for sex, a pillow, a blanket, perfume from inside the Acropolis until she finally disappears after asking her husband to remember to vote for the truce. After another formidable choral interlude between the old men and old women, the sex strike is played out in full. In the infamous scene between Mariah and her husband Kinesias, a woman is finally seen tempting the male as plotted by the women earlier in the play. McDowell suggests that Mariah's husband Kinesius is the same Gucky and Cadaverous poet who was mocked in Aristophanes's Birds. Because Kinesius is a rare name, McDowell believes that the audience of ancient Greece would automatically assume it was the same poet, who was the constant but of comic dramatis and the subject of an entire work by Stratus. Lisa Strata gives Mariah careful directions about how to tempt her husband. Atop her perch, Lisa Strata remains the spectator and director of the scene between husband and wife. Mariah acts as the female seductress in this scene and positions herself as an idealized female or subject to male attraction. Mariah plays at the woman her husband desires. 
The comedy lies in Marine's exploitation of Kinesius' ideal female and the audience's knowledge that Kinesius will not get what he wants. The seductress has a long history in Greek mythology. Possibly two of the most famous actual tribes of women who used men for power were the Amazons and the story of the Lemnian women.